Okay, so today we're going to take a look at building a voltage monitor for my 12 volt car batteries. Um, this is going to run via uh, Tasmota uh, MQTT and it's going to send voltage figures uh, into my home assistant so I can then monitor them and turn on and off charges as required. Can't find anything out there um, other than one for a boat that's really expensive. So we're going to have a crack at making one of our own. So the components we've got here, uh, we've got um, a Node MCU development board up on here. Uh, inexpensive, purchased from eBay. Um, the important bit about this is that it's based around the ESP8266 chip on the top so we can flash that with uh, Tasmota to get the information across to our home assistant. I've also got on here, uh, this is uh, an Arduino uh, voltage sensor up in here. Uh, again, real inexpensive. Effectively, all this is is a couple of resistors, um, and this actually divides the voltage by five, so you can put a maximum of 25 volts into this. Uh, the reason we need to use this is because this Node MCU uh, on the analog in uh, port, it will only accept up to 3.3 volts, and obviously we're working on 12 volts uh, primarily. Also in this, we've got um, a DC-DC uh, converter. This converts 12 volts down to five volts. This will power the Node MCU board with the steady five volts uh, as well. A couple of bits from around the house, uh, some DuPont cables here just to make the job easy. Again, these can all be soldered, uh, so no real issue, but just for ease of use, we'll use those today. A couple of crocodile clips on there as well. Uh, some other bits from around the house, we've got the all important fuse in there. Um, that is a three amp fuse. I'll be changing that for a one amp fuse uh, in due course. Okay, so just to show you the basic layout of how this is gonna function, uh, the 12 volt car battery is here. So we then fuse that off. We run that down into both the DC-DC reducer that reduces to five volts, which will power the Node MCU board. We then include the voltage sensor that also runs to the 12 volts that will then output uh, five times less voltage, which will be a voltage that this can handle, and that will run via a, a signal and a negative cable on there as well. So I'll just show you this real quickly. This is uh, Tinkercad. If you don't know about or haven't seen it, if you just go to tinkercad.com, it's totally free. You can sign up and be using it within a matter of minutes. Um, it's really very good for basic people like me. Uh, so this is the case that we've designed on here. And just to show you, the uh, voltage reducer will sit in the middle on that peg there. And the other four pegs will house the node MCU. There are two small pegs down here and here, and that's where the power supply will go. And the various bits of wiring we will ultimately tuck on the top there. There's a small cutout made for the wire to come out uh, and we will ultimately design a lid but for now we just want to get it running uh, and prove that it actually works and is the correct size. Uh, really good lots of tutorials online if you do need help with this. I have to say really pleased uh, we'll get this over to the 3D printer and uh, hopefully we'll have a box. So this is just to show you the wired layout before we box it all up, uh, just to test that it is actually working. So uh, our 12 volts has been provided by a drill battery. Uh, power comes in, I'm just using these Wago connectors. When it's boxed in, it'll all be soldered up. Uh, this is just a case of laying it out so you can see it. Fused live in here, that runs off to both the voltage sensor here, which drops down from uh, the input voltage of, let's say 12, uh, down by a multiplication of five, and that gets it within the voltage range of the node MCU. That comes out of uh, negative, goes onto the ground, and the signal goes out to the A0, which is the analog input on the node MCU. Uh, we don't actually use the center pin, which is a positive one here. Converter here, 12 volt to five watt. Uh, this is another one I happen to have lying around uh, that plugs directly into the node MCU just makes it easy to show uh, down on here. So we'll go across now to the Tasmota screen uh, and I'll show you all been well if it's working. Okay, so assuming that you've got it powered up and everything's okay, um, we're also gonna assume that you've installed the 
uh, Tasmota firmware on the Node MCU. Uh, it's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, I did mine through Tasmatizer uh, with a USB lead straight into the Node MCU. Real straightforward, but we won't go over that on here. But um, assuming you've got that sorted, you'll uh, open a web browser and connect to the IP address of the Node MCU. That'll bring you up to uh, this screen here. Um, what we need to do is configure it. So uh, into configuration, configure module, we're going to change it from a Sonoff Basic to a generic and we're going to click on save and that's just going to reset the unit and that'll take you back to the main menu. Okay, so when that's done, you'll see the uh, on off has disappeared. Um, I've also named this voltage sensor one. You can do that in the configuration too. Uh, we need to go back into configuration, back to configure module. Um, and what we now need to do down at the bottom where it says A0, we need to change that to ADC input uh, and click on save again. That again will restart. And when it does, we should be left with the analog value reading. Okay, there we go, analog zero, uh, and that's the reading. Now, this isn't a voltage. It's a value between zero and 1024. Uh, dependent on the battery voltage um, and that is what will be sent out to home assistant so there's a little bit of stuff we need to do and if I show you that if we go across to uh, home assistant there if you bring your home assistant up um, and this is the uh, sensor that's created effectively um, through your uh, MQTT output uh, which again it's showing 861 so uh, while we know what it is it's not a lot to see we want to convert that into an actual voltage so uh, what you've got to do is generate another sensor um, and you can do that through a script um, a template sorry and uh, if I go and show you that what you can do on this is go to developer tools and template and it'll actually let you type things in um, and it'll give you the output at the top there as well. So it's really good if you're just messing around trying to get things working. Um, so to kind of explain this, uh, this is the name of the original analog input sensor. So that's the value. Uh, we float it as a number and we add some correction. Now uh, what this does is the voltages are never 100% correct. Um, what you need to do is measure the voltage on the battery with a voltmeter. Uh, and then utilize some amount of correction to get the reading correct. Uh, so that's then divided by 1024. That takes it back to a single digit. Uh, it's multiplied by 3.3, which is the voltage increase from the uh, ESP onto the uh, node MCU, because uh, the ESP does one volt, the node MCU does up to 3.3. Uh, we then multiply that by five uh, again, and that takes us back up to the original battery voltage um, and a little bit there of rounding to two decimal places. So you can see it's taking that figure and that's showing us 13.12, uh, which is a voltage. And that is about perfect uh, as to what the battery is reading. So uh, once we've got that, you need to create a sensor. So within the configuration.yml, um, if you type something along these lines here, um, effectively we create the sensor, we give it a name uh, and a friendly name we tell it what the unit of measurement is up on there and we tell it what the template is and that's effectively what we've just created up on there. Now um, I've got a few different bits in here. This is just extra calibration on here but for the sakes of it we've moved back to uh, this one up here. So we'll get rid of that. Once we've done that and we've uh, restarted Home Assistant what you will then see is you can go and add that new sensor entity onto a card on here, um, real easy, real straightforward. It's a gauge card configuration. Um, we give it a maximum voltage on there. In fairness, we probably want to increase that to uh, 15 there or thereabouts because of charging. We can set the green, red uh, and yellow figures down on here as to when we want to change that as well. Uh, give it a name if you want to. Uh, let's click on save there. And effectively that now shows you your battery voltage sensor and the correct voltage. Hope this has been of some use. Um, I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but um, for me, I'm an amateur. Uh, it was kind of a bit of fun. If you've got any questions, please do ask and I will do my best to answer.